Um, so uh, I started a project called Blue Seed just uh, a few years ago in 2011. Now prior to that I had been working at the Seasteading Institute who as you all know is the organization that's trying to promote seasteading and the seastead ideas from coming forward. And my position at that institute, the Seasteading Institute, was a director of business strategy. What I was most interested in while I was at TSI was what are the business models, what are the companies that one can create that could succeed and generate an enormous amount of value uh, in the world such that it makes sense that it could overcome the incredible cost and challenges of being in a place like the ocean. And uh, while I was there, I even ran a, a business plan competition and I kind of tried to encourage the seasteaders uh, who were there at the institute and those in the community to think about things very much from a business perspective, in fact, from a business first perspective. In other words, sort of creating a pillar, a foundation of value that can then expand to encompass all of the other problems and the technologies and the engineering and the how do you get internet out there and how do you bring people back and forth from a seastead and all these other problems. Everything can be solved if you find the right amount, uh, the right value to be able to create on that seastead, that you can create a business that can be profitable enough to overcome those problems. Even legal problems, political problems. You'd be surprised what a lot of money can do to help those kinds of situations. And so when I left the Seasteading Institute, uh, and also uh, my colleague Dario Mutabja, who was a co-founder on that uh, project with me, and uh, we left the Seasteading Institute and we said, we know of a very specific problem, a very big, important problem that can be solved. And if you can solve it, there's an enormous amount of value to be generated, to be created from it. And in our case, that problem was that there is no visa for immigrants, for entrepreneurs to be able to come from around the world to live and work in the United States, more specifically in Silicon Valley in San Francisco in the Bay Area, which as we all know is kind of the hub for um, technology and for new ideas. It's not that you can't do it in other places, but this is the place that you want to be to make it succeed. There's a reason that conferences like this and other things do so well in this area. It's a very high concentration of the right people. However, we're not letting people from all around the world who want to be here and want to contribute to it and want to create the technologies and the businesses of tomorrow to come and exist here because of our visa system and because of the fact that we have a visa for if you want to work at an existing company, you can go work at Google, you can go work at Apple, but you can't say, I'm going to come here and just create a company without going through some pretty serious headaches, loopholes, finding some other way to do it, which discourages a lot of otherwise uh, very creative, very smart, very uh, driven people from coming here and being able to make it a reality. So we said, okay, that's a big problem. We know how to solve it. And our plan was to go 12 miles off the coast of San Francisco, right, right near here, and station a vessel, um, uh, a vessel that would be large enough to deal with the environmental situation that you have there, with the types of waves that you would encounter in that area, um, with, the, uh, with the other conditions that you encounter, and which has a business model that can really succeed, that makes some perfect sense for it to be pretty much there. There's hardly any other place in the world where, you, where a tech incubator, a tech accelerator, uh, a startup community can succeed quite like it can here. And so we were gonna go over there, create this community, and uh, make this happen. Now, we uh, fundraised, we got about two-thirds of a million dollars. Um, however, as we were doing the research in order to figure out, you know, just what, just what is this going to cost? How feasible is this? We realized that in order to launch Blue Seed would take north of $40 million, right? So we think we at one point we calculated $44 million. Um, that was a bare minimum figure that we had calculated. So, right, that was cutting everything that we could possibly imagine cutting, uh, uh, not being able, of course, to cut certain things because you can't, uh, you can't skimp out on, you know, the number of life vests on the ship, and you can't skip out on a lot of other safety issues. But basically cutting everything we could cut, that's the kind of figure we came up to. And that's still an enormous figure. So think about it from the perspective of a, an angel investor or an early stage investor here in Silicon Valley. You know, typically uh, they want to put money into a company. Maybe they'll put half a million, a million, a couple million dollars into a company before it really proves that there's a market for what it's doing, before it can show... Um, traction, uh, significant traction, et cetera. 
What we were asking VCs was to kind of climb Mount Improbable. Uh, we were asking them to put in more than $40 million into a venture that wasn't yet getting traction, didn't yet have, wasn't yet proven. And that was very, very difficult for investors around this area. It's just not what they're used to. It's not the, the, the sandbox that they're used to playing in. So we went to a lot of those investors, and we were able to raise some money, but we couldn't get from them the big bucks that we wanted to make the project work. So we went to maritime investors. And we said, OK, well, these guys know about the enormous cost and difficulties of doing things at sea. They understand the maritime industry. They understand cruise ships, et cetera. And we would explain our business model to them. Look, we're going to have a bunch of startups on board, entrepreneurs from around the world. We're going to take a little portion of equity from each of those startups, which in effect gives us uh, the, the kind of risk return profile of a, of a VC firm itself. And they said, oh, that sounds really great. They would talk to us about the ship. They would say, oh, cool. Where, you know, what are you going to do with this? How are you going to deal with that? And the whole startup component, their eyes would glaze over, and they'd say, well, we don't know anything about that. We don't understand that part. We're really excited about the sea stuff, the, the maritime stuff. We don't know anything about startups. So Blue Seed was in a difficult position where we could go to VC investors here in the Bay Area. We could explain to them what we're doing, but they, didn't, they, they were scared off by the whole maritime component. The maritime investors were scared off by the whole startup component. So we found ourselves in a kind of a difficult position. Um, eventually, we got uh, somebody who came in and had uh, agreed to, uh, they had promised us uh, about $18 million in funding if we could find the remainder of the funding. But after working on the project for about two years, we said, we've exhausted just about every possible avenue we can think of. We had press from around the world. We were you know, flying to New York and doing all the, you know, the, the, the TV scene and all the rest at the time. So it wasn't a, fa it wasn't a problem of not enough exposure. It wasn't a problem that people hadn't heard about us. But this problem of uh, investors not quite fitting the mold of what we were doing did end up um, uh, making it very difficult for us to raise the remainder of the funding that we wanted to raise to get the project off the ground. At this stage, uh, a few years out, oddly enough, uh, I was mentioning this in a prior panel, but people have been coming to us, to myself and to my other co-founders who had started this project, and saying, guys, uh, uh, maybe there's something there. Maybe we want you guys to resurrect this project, bring it back, because, well, I mean, uh, let's face it, uh, about six to nine months ago, immigration issues came back into the forefront of people's minds, and they said, wow, Blue Seed was a pretty cool solution at the time. Maybe something can be done with it. Um, for now, we are not uh, moving forward on anything. Uh, part of this is because I know there's some other uh, important efforts going on in the sea setting community. And unless there's a good way that we can all work together on this, I don't want to necessarily derail any of those important efforts at this time. Um, but I, I do think that uh, in the future, C Blue Seed is still a fantastic project. It's still a project that can potentially have a big impact on the startup ecosystem and help to kick off the seasteading revolution. And, uh, and I would say, you know, stranger things have happened than the idea that a Blue Seed could come back and, uh, and uh, help, help all of us to realize our dreams once again. So I let Joe ask some questions. Um, so we actually only have about three minutes left, but I'll ask a fairly quick question. Um, so one of the problems you expressed was there was a disconnect between the startup world and the maritime world. That's kind of the problem we face with startup society is the political side versus the technological side. So how do we bring together to, let's say, make a, a blue uh, accelerator? where you bring together people with maritime experience, with venture capitalists and entrepreneurial-minded people? So I think it's, 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 um, it's, in our experience, it was difficult to teach uh, uh, maritime investors, in particular, about the benefits of, a C of, of startups and the kind of unicorn nature of a startup, right? That you have this profile where you can expect most of your startups are, uh, most of the startups in your portfolio are not going to return you any money. Some of them will return you something. And just a couple, if you're lucky, will make it big for you and will make sort of the whole thing worth it. Right? So that was the difficulty that maritime investors had uh, with our project. So I think if you can sign up a big name, particularly um, if, you're, if you're interested in, in sort of a tech hub or something having to do with startups, if you can sign up a big name that will support you and will back you early on, 
then potentially instead of signing up for your project, um, because again, they don't understand certain aspects of your project, what they'll in fact be doing is signing on because they like the other people whom they could potentially be investing with. Right? And, uh, and of course, that happens in, in normal startups here around all the time. Somebody says, well, I don't understand really what your company's doing. I bet you're going to pivot anyway. I don't think you guys, you know, your team's going to stay the same way. But I like this other guy who is investing. I don't know why he's investing, but it sounds a great deal to me if I can piggyback off whatever knowledge uh, he or she has on the market, whatever idea that that person has, and, uh, and then they can build some reputational capital for themselves and potentially do very well. So that would be my answer is find Find an anchor that, that, can, uh, that can back your project, who has a name and who has some uh, dry powder to put behind it, and that anchor can hopefully go and shop your idea around to people who would be less, normally less comfortable with it, such as people from the maritime community. That goes the same, by the way, if you're trying to do something like a medical seastead or some sort of surgical-based seastead or biotech or something like that. Go into somebody in that field and then have their big name, their uh, reputation, be able to pull in investors from these other fields like the maritime industry that you're going to want to have on your side, that you're going to want to have their expertise, you're going to want to have their capital and their ability to make phone calls on your behalf to make it happen. So that's a call of action, everyone, so let's get on that. All right, that's all. Thank you.